Good afternoon, Victory. On behalf of my wife and I, Bahamas Faith Ministries, and indeed the entire Bahamas and the Laclaine and Dorcas Burroughs clan who are not represented here today, we first of all bring our condolences. And today I want to pay tribute to my brother. Now I know everybody in here knows that he is my brother-in-law, but he's actually my brother. This tribute is called How We Became Brothers. I got off the plane in Tulsa, Oklahoma to go to college. At that time, I guess Robin probably didn't know and Marlon probably didn't know, but I was still on probation. So <laughs> I met Robin and found out that he don't drink, he don't smoke, he don't go to clubs, he don't do none of this stuff. And I was like, boy, how, how, are, we gonna, how are we gonna relate? <laughs> and then I found out that he was a basketball player. So we bonded around basketball. We went playing everywhere, all over Tulsa. And then we went from basketball to Bible studies. So I would tag along with him to these Bible studies. And these were the strangest Bible studies I ever saw in my life. Because I stopped going to church when I was about 11 or 12. So I didn't, you know, I wasn't, I was vaguely familiar with church, but this type of stuff that they were doing, I was like, what in the world is this? They were talking about being blessed, 3 John 2, and all these kinds of things. And I was like, wow, this is, I don't know no church like this. And everybody was happy. Because when I was growing up in church, everybody was crying. <laughs> you know, and they were always, looks like sorry or whatever the deal was. And so I went to these Bible studies, and it caught my interest. And, you know, he didn't want to pressure me into getting saved. But every now and then, he would come to me. He'd say, Dave, uh, you believe in God? I said, yeah, yeah, I believe in God. And he'd say, uh, what are you going to do about it? So I said, well, you know, I said, Robin, I, I'm not ready for that right now. So he left me alone a little bit. I gave him the same answer another time. He said, when are you going to be ready? He said, have you ever considered you may not have time to be ready? And so we just kept along, going to the Bible studies, and then I had some other strange occurrences. So I remember we were coming home, Robin, Marlon, and I, and he opened the front door of the house, and I don't think he was working at the time. And when he opened the door, there were envelopes under the door. And I was like, what's that? He said, the Lord just told people to bless me. And I was like, I never heard nothing like that before. <laughs> and I was like, man, this Christian stuff is some serious stuff. <laughs> and then he pointed to a, a verse that he had on the refrigerator. The refrigerator was Philippians 4, 19. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. And I looked at the scripture, and I listened to what he said, and I said, man, you know, this thing must be all right, you know? <laughs> and so after some further Bible studies and going to church, he led me to Christ. So I, that was the first step in us becoming brothers. We became spiritual brothers. The second thing was that he was my friend. So we started out as brother-in-law, and then we became friends. We played a lot of basketball. We went to every nook and cranny, north side of Tulsa. When I came to Charlotte, all over the gyms in Charlotte, the YMCA, whatever. all we did was play ball. And then after we finished playing ball, then we would go home and watch games. And before we went home, 
we would stop by, I, I think somebody mentioned that he had a sweet tooth. Was that Joy? So before we go home to watch the games, we would stop by Krispy Kreme. <laughs> and it was one box of donuts for him and one box of donuts for me. <laughs> And then when we got home, he would, he would get milk and I would get apple juice. And we kept repeating that. And by the way, Marty, he was competitive. Because, you know, he was a nice guy until you start talking smack to him. <laughs> so I was like, man, you, you little short dude, I could beat you. <laughs> and boy, he put it on me over and over again. And then I would start to get him back. And then he wouldn't be happy to, to be even. He had to come out ahead. <laughs> so we were friends. He was the best man in my wedding. I came to Charlotte just about every year. And I got to see his life. And he was always consistent. And so we shared in a lot of things. And I remember one incident that I'll never forget. We were playing basketball one day, and he got a message that the bank wanted to see him. And we kept playing basketball. Then he got another message say, you know, you have an appointment with the bank. And so he looked at me, and he said, all right. And so I said, what are we going to do? Are we going to go home and change? He said, no. So we went to this meeting in the bank, smelling stink. And so I asked him on the way home, I said, man, how could you go into a meeting like that? He said, man, these are the same people who when I needed money, they had no time for me. He said, I ain't going home to change my clothes or whatever. They're going to have to just enjoy this situation. <laughs> and I was there laughing because the people were, yes, Mr. Gould, yes, Mr. Gould. <laughs> Number three. We were family. So I started out as brother-in-law. We became friends, and then I became family. Now, I was family because in Tulsa, Marlon and Robin was the only family that I had. So I always came over to the house. We, I spent weekends there. I never went home for Christmas or spring break. Every time I had a break, I, I, I would always spend it with them. And I, I, I realized that I was beginning to wear out my welcome one day when um, we went to the grocery store and Robin bought a loaf of bread and a, a, a pack of bologna sausage. And then he went out to do something and when he came back, he looked in the fridge and he said, uh, Dave, what happened to the sausage and the bread? I said, I ate it. So. He, <laughs> He said, where's the rest of it? I said, no, I ate all of it. He said, you mean the whole loaf of bread and the meat? So I, 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 they didn't put me out. But I had to pay penance. So my penance was babysitting Joms and Joy. Now, if you know Joms, not so much Joy, but if you know Joms, Joms was a certified terrorist. <laughs> and Joy was a part-time terrorist because when Joy got together with Joms, then she, she adopted some of it. So I would be home with, with Joms, and I'm watching the TV, and then Joms would stand up in front of the TV. And I'd say, man, get from in front of the TV. He'd say, I ain't. And so after a while, after I couldn't convince him, I punch him, you know? And so when his dad came home, he said, Dad, Uncle Dave punched me. <laughs> so Robin said, man, don't punch Joms. If he does anything wrong, talk to me. I said, man, I want to talk to you, but three, that's three hours later, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so I had to pay penance by taking care of Joms and Joy, because sometimes they used to team up on me. So Joms wasn't happy enough to terrorize me on his own. Sometimes he got Joy to join him. 
And then we went on road trips. Wherever Robin went, I went. You know, he was always preaching somewhere, always in some church. We went on the road trips. And I remember one Christmas, Robin and I, we were up until about 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning putting together a, a drum set for Joms. And so Joms had gone to sleep. We said, okay, we're going to wake him up 6 o'clock in the morning, and we're going to show him his drum set, and this is his Christmas present. At about 4.35, we heard a boom, a shock, a boom, a shock. And by 6 o'clock in the morning when we got up, he had already poked holes in the drums and bent the cymbals. Marlon, you remember that? <laughs> Number four. He was my first pastor, my first pastor since I had gotten saved. You know, I hadn't been to church in a long time, and I didn't like church. But Robin was my friend. We were family, so wherever he went, I went. His first, I guess, ministry assignment was in a place called Cushing, Oklahoma. Did I get that right, Marlon? And so, you know, they, you ever heard of the term one horse town? Well, this was a half a horse town. <laughs> they didn't even have one horse. <laughs> and when we went into the church, it was only like a few members. I mean, maybe five or something like that. And so I was a part of the membership. I was the first member of whatever church, Marlon and Robin. And, and by the way, Marlon used to play the piano and sing. Y'all didn't know that. And so that began a journey where I went with him from church to church, and we studied the word together. He turned me on to a lot of preachers who were preaching the word at the time, Fred Price and people like that. And so I started to get to grow and get deep into the word. And I remember when I graduated from college and I was getting ready to go home, I spent, I think, uh, the summer here with Robin, and Robin said, man, Dave, um, why don't you stay with me? You know, he, to, to be a part of his ministry team or whatever it was. I didn't know at the time. And I said, no, man, Robin, I'm going home. He said, all right. And then when he was getting ready to start Victory, he talked about it. So I was actually the first unofficial member of Victory. <laughs> so whatever church he was in, I was a part of the membership. And over the years, victory has played an integral role in my life and also in the life of so many Bahamians, many, many, not, not just a few, a lot of Bahamians have been impacted by him. Most of my nephews and nieces came to school here. There's, there's so much we can talk about, about Dr. Gould. And then there were so many friends that I made here I won't, I won't call too many names because if I try to call all the names, I wouldn't even be able to get everybody. But I remember Dobie and Crutch. I remember Dave Wallace always used to pick me up. I remember Freddie and Darlene Bailey. And then we get to number five. Number five, he was my mentor, counselor, and advisor. He kept me on the straight and narrow because I had gotten saved, but I don't know if I was always converted. <laughs> and so while I was at ORU, I remember one day some dude did something to me. And so Bahamians would know what I talk about. So I threatened to chop up the dude. That's like, you know, you get a machete and you chop somebody up. And then the, the referee, I didn't like something that the referee did when we were playing a basketball game, so I picked up the volleyball pole and ran behind the referee. <laughs> and so after a while, um, I, I, I talked to Robin. I, was, I, said, I said, man, I said, Robin, you know, I don't know if I could make it in this thing. You know, I said, I don't know if I'm cut out. And I'll never forget these words he said to me. He said this. He said, Dave, progress is more important than perfection. He said, you'll never be perfect, 
but you can make progress. And he said, look where you come from to where you are now. And you know, that kept me focused. And I started thinking, I'm actually progressing. Even though if I may slip here or there, I was progressing. He was my advisor when it came to challenge and tragedy, whatever it was. I would always call on him. My siblings used to call on him. You know, a lot of times when I called Marilyn, I didn't call Marilyn because I was calling her. I was trying to find Robin. <laughs> and she knew that. Not that we didn't talk a lot, but you know, um, he was always my go-to guy. Because he, 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 was, he, was, he wasn't my brother-in-law. This was my brother. This was my big bro. And so whenever I needed advice, whenever I needed counsel, whatever I need, needed, he would help me. And then finally, he was a real soldier. When I say a real soldier, don't worry about that. You know, some, some, sometimes you get close to people. And when you get close to great leaders, sometimes you get disappointed. I was never disappointed. He was a man of faith. He was a man of conviction. He supported me whatever I did. I remember when we went through the tragedy at Bahamas Faith Ministries when Dr. Miles Monroe passed away. First person I called was Robin. I said, Robin, I know what I have to do. I said, but man, you know, this ain't really me. I don't know how I can do this. And I remember he walked me through the process. He said, Dave, you do this, you do this, you do that, and then you'll be okay. And the funny thing about it is the advice that he gave to me was what pulled me through. I had to do seven funerals in the first four weeks. And it was his personal concern I'm not a crying person. <laughs> In June of this year, I was ministering in Atlanta and my wife and I, we caught COVID. And I hadn't seen Robin since um, John's home going. And so I called Marlon and I said, Marlon, we stuck for a couple of weeks and I don't want to be stuck in a hotel or whatever. So she said, okay, come and stay at the house. So we stayed at the house for much, I think about two weeks. And um, he, he, he didn't really come over, nobody came over because you know we had COVID and you had to isolate and all that kind of stuff. And then I think the day that I was leaving or the day before that I was leaving, I was able to see Robin. And when I saw Robin, he was fine. I didn't see, you know, it didn't look like any problem. I don't know if there was a problem or not at the time. And then I went home and I was like, okay, man, you know, we're gonna catch up. And then somebody called me a month or so ago and they said, Robin is not well. And I was like, man, Okay, if he's sick, he always, he, I, I never really seen him sick, you know. I never really seen him have any problem that was insurmountable or anything like that. So I didn't think anything of it. And then um, somebody told me to watch the program. So I turned on the VCC program and I saw him. And I was driving down the street. <laughs> pulled over and I started crying. 
because I never saw him like that. And I call him, I say, I say, Robin, coming to see you, man. He said, man, Dave, don't worry about me, man. He said, I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to be fine. And then I started watching the program every week. And I said to Angie, I said, Angie, we got to go to Charlotte. <laughs> so I called Marlon. <laughs> and I said, Marlon, I got to come see Robert. So she said, she said, Dave, we're go, we going on vacation. We're going to take a break these couple of weeks. And then you can come after that. Started looking for tickets. And I was planning on coming because I needed to see my brother. And <laughs> then I got the call. Man, I'm sorry for. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to keep crying. Miss you, bro. Miss you, big bro. See you again.